Yo guys, today we're taking a look at the Lauria again. I have some more thoughts now that I've actually played the ship a little bit more. And it's gone pretty well. Um, but is this ship really worth 36,000 steel? Don't have access to the discount coupon, considering it is a special event. Pretty good salvo there into the Alabama. No Citadel, unfortunately, but that is some nice full pen damage. I will say having the short fuses on the AP is pretty nice. The problem, though, can be the accuracy at times. I've found that this thing is not a Thunderer competitor. <laughs> i found it to be a little disappointing. Salvos like that one are relatively common, and this is something that I've even gone into a training room to test. Uh, in fact, I was so disgusted after this particular match that I went to a training room for quite a while just to see what this ship was really capable of. And it wasn't necessarily that Alabama only, I would say it was this salvo here uh, on this Conqueror. He's very close range and very much too broadside to be taking that little damage. <laughs> these ships, uh, these shells actually have more than enough pen there. We should, we should easily be doing two, three citadels worth, I would say, considering what this ship is supposed to be, which is battle cruiser dispersion formula. Typically, that is going to give us a lot better accuracy. Um, if you didn't know, there's two ways of calculating dispersion, and the battle cruiser formula gives you much, much better values on a pretty important part, which is the actual size of the dispersion ellipse. Sigma relates a little bit more to the tendency of the shells to go to the middle of that ellipse, but obviously, the smaller you can make that ellipse, the better. And then in that second salvo, I had no idea how those shells went so high on that Conqueror, but pretty disappointing. It's not all bad, though. Uh, the sap shells here are pretty amazing, especially against submarines. If you're looking to lap subs, well, sap actually does full pen damage to submarines. So this Gato is not going to get away with surfacing here. Yep, half our shells hit him, and he's already dead. We probably one-shot him there which uh, feels pretty good if he was on full HP. So that's enough of those clips. Now I've got the rest of this video to show you a mostly complete match here, skipping over some of the more boring bits. But the Laria here, I still think is gonna be frustrating to fight against. That was kind of my main takeaway from the first impressions. I was just worried that it was gonna be another one of these thunders where it dictates the engagement through its amazing concealment. And then it has these very accurate guns that can hit you at any angle and do a bunch of damage. Thunder, of course, does that through high explosive, very high alpha damage, as well as fire chance. And I'm worried that sap is gonna be a similar idea just without the dots afterwards. And so far, I haven't really felt like the sap is all that amazing. It can do some good damage there. 15K into the Monty there feels pretty good. And there are times where, hey, you're gonna find yourself against a cruiser and this sap being 114 mils of pen, I believe, is gonna allow you to even Citadel cruisers, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, it's, it's pretty good, but I will say that it doesn't feel nearly as consistent as a Thunderer would be, so my initial thoughts of it just being an Italian Thunderer, not necessarily the case. I do think the armor is a little better on the Laria, even though we do have a very exposed Citadel. Um, the Thunderer just doesn't have great armor at all. Although, it doesn't really matter too much on that ship since it does dictate the engagements quite easily. And so does Laria. Uh, Laria has a much worse turning radius though, so it's not quite as maneuverable. But you're gonna see us take very little damage here from this Montana because he can't overmatch us and we're so angled and able to keep our guns firing that it's just gonna do a lot of auto bounces against us. So in these kind of situations are where SAP is gonna be just amazing. Of course, with AG, we'd be getting fires, but with SAP, you're getting the higher alpha damage out of the uh, shelves here. So 10,000 damage, not too bad, not as insane maybe as uh, I was thinking, but thinking about it a different way, every 26 seconds or so, you're gonna do 10,000 damage to someone no matter their angle. That's pretty difficult to fight against, especially if this thing is fast enough to be flanking around the map and then also is able to uh, disengage relatively easily. I will say carriers are a pretty massive pain point. Haven't showed it in this video, but the AA is just abysmal. So don't be trying to take uh, any sort of open flanks when there's a carrier in the game. You're going to die relatively quickly. It's very difficult to dodge with that poor turning radius. 
And I think overall this ship, I'm a little more disappointed in it than I was initially. I was pretty interested in it being a sap version of a thunder, like I've already said. And I probably overhyped it a little bit in that first impressions video. It's kind of funny. I over I feel like I overhyped the Laria in that first impressions video. And I kind of slept on the Lucian. That thing is pretty fun uh, with that DPM. The HE Alpha is a bit of an issue with that thing still, um, but I certainly had a better time the more I played with it. Whereas the Laria, I felt like it got more and more disappointing as I saw more of what this ship was capable of. It just felt a little bit too inconsistent, I would say. And you guys know I'm not a huge fan of inconsistencies, but yet that's 12,000 damage into an angled Monty at 15 kilometers. My w main worry about this thing really comes down to Am I going to be fighting this thing and it's just going to be doing 10 to 20k salvos into me no matter the angle while I'm trying to push in and he's just kiting away at the back of the map and there's not much I can do about it? Because that's always been the concern about the thunder. Anytime I see a thunder, it's like, well, he's just going to be burning me down, doing 8,000 damage salvos and a fire every 22 seconds or so. Is this just going to be more alpha without those dots, but the similar idea? That's kind of my worry here. And... I think it will be like that if you're getting good rolls on your dispersion. I don't think it's quite as consistent as the Thunder would be in those kinds of situations. But it will be frustrating to fight, just is the nature of sap shells in this game, allowing you to essentially pen at any angle. Yes, it does have the overmatch. I don't forget about that. We overmatch cruisers, 30mm uh, armor here with the sap, which is very good. But given how sap pens and behaves, uh, you have to angle at less than a 10 degree bow in angle uh, in order to bounce it. Otherwise, it's got a chance of panning. <laughs> and if you're at 20, 25 degree angle, uh, here you can see we're about a 32 degree angle to this curve first. Uh, if you're at a 20 degree angle, the sap is just gonna, just gonna pan. It just won't bounce off of that. So it's a very, very frustrating shell type to fight against. And I think is the reason that a lot of the Italian ships that came out after the cruiser line, because Venice is pretty amazing. Um, they have some serious weaknesses, the battleships and those DDs. And maybe this thing was an attempt to see what a more, a slightly more accurate version of a SAT battleship would be, uh, without making it too accurate. Of course, it does lack the shell volume as well, so you have those really punchy salvos. Maybe that's the reason that I've been a little bit disappointed in this thing. It feels like a lot of these sap salvos would, would have been done by a Venice as well. And the Venice has a better reload. <laughs> it's uh, It certainly is pretty easy to do 15,000 damage sap salvos into a Conqueror, for example. And it is good out of a battleship too, but maybe a little bit less good. I don't know. I'm, I'm in a very weird position with this ship. I think it might be really frustrating to fight against and yet while I'm playing it I can't help but feel a little bit underwhelmed by these guns so maybe that means it's perfectly balanced <laughs> uh, but I'm not, I'm not sure if 36,000 steel is really worth it for this thing uh, once it does go on normal sale I would expect it to be like I said around 31,000 steel is my guess pretty common for a tier 10 battleship and I don't think I'd recommend it over a Borgone. I think the Borgone will just be a little more enjoyable to play if you're looking for a steel battleship. And just to clarify with the DDs, you don't actually get sap full pens. So that's maybe the special thing about dealing with submarines in this one. Uh, you do get full pens on those subs, but against DDs, yeah, the it'll show up as a full pen, but the actual damage you get is an over pen's worth of damage. I did try out the secondaries, guys, as I promised in the last video, and I struggled to get in range. And when I did, they have a 9 second reload and have very poor accuracy, so not worth specking into. Their DPM is just too low. But I really would love to see a Italian battleship change where they get rid of sap out of the main guns entirely, swap the sap over to the secondaries and make them that kind of a brawling battleship build. Keep them focused on close range. Give them a little more accuracy maybe at close range. Uh, could be a very fun thing to see. Uh, but this thing, more of a medium to long range sniper that uh, is just gonna do damage really no matter the angle. A little bit like a Thunderer, but 
probably worse, which is a good thing. As for the build here on the Lauria, I do think it's just a very standard battleship build. I will say Brisk is probably the way to go with it. You can get an insanely fast battleship out of it. Uh, flanking there is going to be really, really impactful. And we don't necessarily need Grease the Gears, thanks to some pretty impressive turret traverse base. Uh, 34 and a half seconds isn't too bad to deal with. So it does mean you can get away with Brisk. It's not like a Yamato, for example, where it's just mandatory to take Grease the Gears. Uh, a lot of these newer battleships with big guns tend to get fine turret traverse these days, which is kind of nice for them. Uh, it does make some of those older battleships a little bit of a pain to go back and play at times, but these new ones do get that bonus. Still going reload here. Uh, I think the range mod isn't going to be necessary, although you'll probably see people playing with it. Uh, you do have a spotter plane for the times where you need a little more range. Also keep in mind you could be running Sansonetti here. Uh, in testing, we only had access to a normal commander, but if you wanted to, run Sansonetti, and that'll give you this extra range here. Anytime you destroy one ship, just the first time you take out a ship in the battle, you get yourself 8% extra range, which would be, would be pretty good, I would say. Especially since it's a premium, it can be swapped in and out. Uh, you can swap Sansonetti in and out for free, which is very, very useful. Subjectively, I would say the ship looks pretty cool. Uh, it's a little awkward how low it is in the water at the back sometimes <laughs> when the waves get a little rough in game. It's like, oh, is this going to sweep over the ship or not? But uh, it does manage to look pretty good. And it's fast as well, which is maybe a bit of an underrated aspect of battleships when I'm reviewing them. I constantly am talking about the guns, but having speed is really, really nice. If you're a little late to rotations, that kind of thing, um, if you're out of position, Having the speed to make up for that is really, really useful. Um, and so this thing does have that. I don't know. What do you guys think of this thing? I Will you be getting it? I'm not even sure if I'm going to get it on my main account yet. I might wait for it to be uh, a little bit cheaper. Only minorly, right? 31,000 steel. Although we do get the coupon then, but there's no telling when it'll actually come back. We finally got Brisbane uh, as a final announcement for this video. Brisbane is back, uh, available in the armory. Here it is, this account already has it, but 252,000 coal if you're interested. Good to see that one come back. That's been a bit of a complaint of mine uh, over the last couple of months that, where is this ship? When is it coming? <laughs> he said it was gonna be here and not only in a uh, time-gated event. And it's nice to see that come through. But that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, let me know what you think of this ship. If you've purchased it, maybe give us some thoughts on it in the comments down below. Kind of mixed on it, as you can tell. Uh, but thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.